I was very proud of how much Bible I read every day, but I knew that my prayer life was an afterthought. And so I did something that I'd been resisting for years. I, I knew a woman once, a good friend of mine, and she called me and she said, I don't know what to do. I love my church. This is where all my friends are. I don't want to leave, but I can't stand my pastor. And I said, well, what happened? And she said, nothing happened. He's, I'm sure he's a fine person. He's never done anything really to offend me. It's just that he's such a terrible preacher. And so I dread every Sunday. So what should I do? Maybe she was expecting me to say, well, you know, if he's that bad of a preacher, there's other options. But what I said was, well, I'm sure you're already praying for him, so... And she said, well, actually, I'm not. I said, well, what are you doing then? I mean, the Bible commands it. If, if you start to pray for someone pretty soon, you will start to see the world through their eyes, and, and you don't dislike them anymore. Now, let's all acknowledge there's that really evil part inside of each of us that resists that and says, well, then I'm not going to start praying for them because I enjoy disliking that person. They deserve my dislike. <laughs> But you need to change. You're going to be happier and healthier and more like Jesus when you pray for that person. And beyond that, there's that person you're in conflict with. Maybe, maybe you're married and, and right now your marriage is not so good. Uh, maybe you're a kid and, and your parents are just on your nerves. You just, you just wish you could leave home and never come back. Or maybe it's, it's somebody else in your life. Maybe it's a roommate situation or a coworker. But there's that conflict that's driving you crazy. The first step is to pray for them. Yeah, but, but they, they're the one that messed with me. They're the one that needs to apologize. Pray for them. Start there. Praying changes us, and we need to be changed. A few years ago, I felt I came under this tremendous conviction because I knew that I wasn't I wasn't as prayerful as I should be. I was, I was very proud of how much Bible I read every day but I knew that my prayer life was an afterthought. And so I did something that I'd been resisting for years. I knew people who were powerful in prayer and they all did this, but I always said, nah, I don't need to do that. But I finally broke down and did it. And that is, I started keeping a written prayer list. For me, what works best is I keep it on my phone. And here's why, because usually the way I find out about prayer requests is people walk up to me and they say, hey, pray for this. And by the way, here's a little clue. If you have something important to tell me, if you tell me on a Sunday morning, it goes right through. I mean, I, I'm just, my, my mind is all over the place. So on Sundays, if you see me holding my phone and on my phone, I'm not checking scores, I'm not updating my social media profile, I'm writing down some prayer request somebody told me before it vanishes from my brain. And so I, on this little note app on my phone, I, I've got people I know that need prayer and I need, I've got my coworkers here at, at First Baptist on there and I've got churches that I'm concerned about and other people. And then at night I have a separate list of all the people I know who don't know Christ. And I've structured it so that I'm, I'm able to pray for my entire prayer list every week. And that's made all the difference for me. I'm not saying I'm, I'm there yet, but it's changed me. It's made me a better person. 